chlorine gas is toxic. TCCA is also toxic. Hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, hydrogen chloride, and sodium hydroxide are corrosive. Chloral is also a sedative. I don't condone the misuse of it. We will also be producing some side products such as acetaldehyde and ethyl chloride, which may also pose a hazard. Ethanol is flammable. Do this outside in a fume hood or in some other well-ventilated place, although ideally done in a fume hood. Because ethanol is flammable, make sure you have proper fire safety protocol in place. Because we are adding an oxidizer, chlorine gas, into a fuel, ethanol, there may be a chance of combustion if you don't control the reaction conditions properly. Do not try this at home. <laughs> Welcome back everyone, and um, today we're going to prepare some chloral by the direct chlorination of ethanol. And originally I did a bunch of stoichiometry and stuff in here. Chloral synthesis, direct chlorination of ethanol. did this, and this is what's supposed to happen, but this reaction is a messy reaction. If we go over, oh and also uh, all this stuff, I wrote this because I couldn't find a person post-production here. In fact, Hazelchem does actually have a video on making chloral by the direct chlorination of ethanol, which I somehow missed. Yeah. Well, at least, like, a clear one. But then I read, like, yesterday, I rephrased my search. Instead of making chloral or synthesis of chloral, I wrote preparation of chloral. And prep chem to the rescue. Preparation of chloral. You can see this reaction's quite messy. One, two, three. It uses three moles of CL2, which... I, I, I used four in mine in the reaction, but... Yeah. And, um, you can see it's quite a messy reaction, really. But here it is, so... Oh, also, there is another video on YouTube about making chloral by direct chlorination of ethanol. And, uh, they did basically this. But uh, they didn't say they used this, and they didn't... Like, it just, whatever, we're going to be making chloral, so, this is also in my fight against the mosquitoes. Pyrotechnical is making DDT to kill mosquitoes, I am as well, and as we speak right now, I am being bitten by a stupid mosquito. It appears the mosquitoes here have calmed down though, um, before when they bit you, it just grew into highs, you don't take allergy medication, it just grows and grows, and I had like, a length this long on my leg once not fun it was also um it's sort of like if you uh the mosquitoes here and if you, if, you, if you get stung by them it feels like you got like numbed but it's also painful still somehow weird so yeah we're gonna kill them with dbt so um 100 mils ethanol cooled flask with dry chlorine maintained temperature below 10 c quickly absorbed and after a short time what is a short time? I don't know. Uh, connect to a reflux condenser. I've already set up reflux. Uh, let's see. Uh, chlorinate. Uh, gently warming to 60 Celsius. Saturations of the solutions continue with chlorine until it's fully absorbed. What does that mean? What do, what do you mean by f until it's fully absor absorbed? Does that mean once you keep pumping in chlorine, it will eventually all dissolve? Or like after a certain point, it starts dissolving? I don't know. Chlorination is complete when density is 1.4 grams. I broke my fancy scale, so we can't do that. And the liquid is gently boiled for a short time and allowed to cool, cautiously mixed with conch sulfuric. You get, you separate off your chloral, and then that's it. So, we're gonna go with mine first, and then we're gonna do the fancy one. Well, the one prep can says, which is just pumping chlorine until density changes, but um. Yeah, uh, I originally was gonna use calcium hypochlorite, but the, um, lows ran out of it, so I went and bought the fancy trichloroisocyanuric acid stuff. Here it is. Five pounds of it for $56. It was cheaper than I expected, but, yeah. It's 94%, so I'm just gonna use a bit more than if it was pure, but, oh well. So let's see. Uh, 150 milliliters of anhydrous ethanol, yep, some conch sulfuric acid, that's for drunk. Step HCl gas with the 
things. Okay, so instead we're going to be using 155 grams of trichloric isocyanuric acid and 200 milliliters of 32% hydrochloric acid. So here's the apparatus. We have our chlorine generator here, and by the way, this is the first time I'm really working with a lot of chlorine, so a bit spooky, but yeah. So here's our chlorine generator. We will put the TCCA in that, hydrochloric acid in that, and you'll notice there's only 100 milliliter, but fancy one. So I so after I add all the acid, I can close the equalizing arm, pop this off, add more acid, close it, open this, and then start addition again. Goes into 50 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid to dry it. And then it goes up through this PVC tube, which shouldn't be destroyed because, well, it's dry now. This length definitely will be destroyed. Uh, then goes in through a thermometer adapter through a glass tube into our reaction vessel. Which, I'm using a fancy 4-neck glass. You can use a 3-neck glass. I just want the 4th one so I can look fancy and pour the ethanol through this one. Yeah. I also don't have a 500 mil, I also don't have a 3 neck um, 250 mil, I only have a 4 neck and a 2 2 neck flasks, so yeah. And on top we have a 300 millimeter lock condenser, which then goes into our, I was running out of gas adapters, I only have 2 thermometer adapters and my other gas adapters used here. This is actually from a washing bottle that I broke a while ago. So on top we have our classic, a real classic of amateur chemistry. A vacuum takeoff gas adapter, which then goes down into our trap, which will destroy any chlorine and, and um, HCl, because this reaction generates HCl. And now, at first I'm going to use concentrated sodium hydroxide, but as the reaction progresses, I'm going to swap it over to water, so we can save some of that HCl post-production again. I ended up just binning the HCl, because, yeah, I don't want to purify it. Yeah. I know HCl is cheap, but might as well try to get it, and I could definitely purify it up again. So first, I'm going to add in our 150 milliliters of ethanol, and I'm going to set up an ice bath. So first, we need 150 milliliters of ethanol. It doesn't really matter how much exactly, because we're just going to pump chlorine into it anyways. So, here is my broken grad cylinder. The other one also broke me, so my dad knocked it off the shelf. My dad messes everything up and all. Uh, I, I, I should probably just buy a gallon of this stuff, to be honest. Um, there's an Amazon listing selling a gallon of anhydrous ethanol, 99.5%. The 0.5% is tertiary butanol to denature it. So, like, they can avoid alcohol tax, but it's pretty much pure ethanol, so that's pretty cool, right? So there we go. And I'm gonna go set up an ice bath in this cake tin. Oh, and also, when you go to Walmart, buy these cake tins. Buy a large one and a small one. The small one will fit 250 milliliter flasks, 150 and below. And these large ones, they can fit whole beakers and stuff. And they're made of aluminum, so you can stir while using them still. And you can also use them as oil baths and stuff, but I hate oil baths. And also, it's a bit shallow, so I wouldn't use more oil baths, to be honest. Maybe water baths, but otherwise, no. And funny thing about this hot plate, um, well, it's stupid by design, well, not intentionally, it's just a stupid hot plate that I made, but, um, so I plugged it into the garage, um, outlet, which has a GSCI on it, it tripped the GSCI every single time I plugged it in, and had the back main power switch turned on, so, there's some issue with that, but then I plug it into the kitchen one, which also is a GSCI, and doesn't trip, what the hell is up with this, but, um, I'll go get a stopper and some ice. Oh, and also my dad brought back a pumpkin. I will be blowing that up. <laughs> Just ice. I freeze it. So this thing is supposed to be an ice cube tray. Like, you free, you put the ice cube tray in the front, and it freezes, and you pour it in here, which... No. Uh, I'm just gonna... I just keep it in a large block. Because ice is pretty useful, and my fridge also takes a long time. Look at this block of ice. Perfect. And we're just going to smash it up a bit. Now it's just a matter of waiting for it to cool down. It's currently at 18 Celsius. So let's just cool this down a bit. I can raise this up a bit more. And yeah, I have the thing on the lap track. Oh, and the reason why we're doing this outside is because, well, one, the setup's large, two, the, set the fume hood is broken, and three, even if I could use the fume hood, the setup's too large. <laughs>
once again, this is not a tutorial, but if you are following this for whatever reason, this is not the right amount of TCCA. You just add chlorine until it works. So yeah, don't bother weighing anything out or measuring anything out. You just want chlorine and that's pretty much it. Once again, don't do this. <laughs> so we're just gonna... I knew it was going to be difficult, but not this bad. Maybe it's better too. I'm going to put it in a bag and smash it. Camera. I think there's a bit of wind because this dust is very irritating. Hear me out, it may actually be a bad idea to grease a joint on this chlorine generator with sulfuric acid before you even added your cool chlorine and... Hmm. Well, my powder flint was too short, but... Uh. And we shall add in your hydrochloric acid. And, uh, before I forget... Let's also add our sodium hydroxide to our scrubber. It is the time for the fun to start. Let's start our chlorine generation. I'm gonna tighten that a bit. We shall open that, and we're gonna start. Oh. That is very fast. Point four. We're just going to start a slow addition of our hydrochloric acid. And you can see that orange gas already. <laughs> Not orange. Yellow green gas already. Spooky. So it has gone yellow. And the reason why we're pointing a light is because it's the radical chlorination. It uses the photo, the light, the split. I did have 50 watt halogen bolts at, a, at some point. But I lost them. <laughs> I don't know where they are. So this is what we're gonna do. I don't think any corn's escaping up into the thing yet. Well, there's a tiny bit of color, but 10 Celsius. So turn that off. Turn the stirring up. So very stirring. Look at that beautiful color. You can't off some of the water, that back on, and ice, keep it cold. You can see the yellow is actually disappearing now, quite interesting, very interesting. And if anything happens, I'll, I'm gonna up you, update you. But let's, let's do a very slow addition. This is really quite fun. I just get to sit here, eat salsa, uh, play PBZ2, and just occasionally turn the chlorine on a bit, turn it off again, watch the temperature, and that's sort of it. And yes, I know, don't no food or drink in the lab, but I'm not handling chemicals in open containers. It's all in closed setups, except for that. But I don't, I don't touch that thing. But yeah, this is fun. Yeah, it's gone yellow again. I also added a few cap clips because, um, um, I should use a larger flask or put a stir bar in this or something because after it reacts with the TCA, it leaves behind cyanuric acid and, um, that sort of just impedes the reaction. So I had, so I shook that flask a bit and that uh, adapter popped out because the vinyl tube has gone stiff. Pretty cool. What time is it anyways? 7.26. Not that bad. So yeah. Oh yeah, and join the Discord. You can see me doing these things in real time. So that's cool, I guess. Okay, so according to my timer, it'll take another 5 hours and, like, what, 57 minutes? Until we can raise the temperature of this thing and start adding even more chlorine. So, yeah. It's gonna be a long while. I also just realized that uh, I actually used the wrong amount of ethanol. This is for the one mole scale. This is for the half mole scale. Yeah. 
still nothing much happening, but um, uh, in between editions, the heat has not really been rising much. As you can see, there's quite a lot of HCO evolution here, and that's indicative of reaction. And of course, there's a bug dubbing this over because there's too much noise. I think that it should be fine heating this now. This thing is not really generating any chlorine anymore, so I'm going to swap it out for a new one. And start pumping in a lot more chlorine. But first, I shall set this to a reasonable temperature. And we're just going to let this react. There's so many bugs in this water bath. It's ridiculous. There's still another two hours left. But it should be fine now because it's not really doing anything anymore. Perhaps I'll turn this off and let it warm up by itself. Then pump in more chlorine. So first things first. I'm going to perform a new quench bath with sodium hydroxide and water. This should react with the remains of our chlorine generator to neutralize chlorine and to destroy the TCCA. However, me, having hindsight now, this is stupid. TCCA and sodium hydroxide react and will explode. <laughs> well, will form chloramines. Post, 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 post production here. I want to dive into why this actually happens. So I did a bit of stoichiometry. You see, we have trichloroisocyanuric acid, cyanuric acid, but the three hydrogens are replaced with three chlorines instead. And now this by itself is already incredibly cursed, as you can see by structure. It's a compound containing nitrogen with three, well, not free, but active chlorine. So what happens is, this reacts with three sodium hydroxide to form cyanuric acid and three sodium hypochlorite. What does hypochlorite do with cyanuric acid? It goes to chloramines. And now, this also addresses a second issue, which is that not just sodium hypochlorite does this, but any sort of hypochlorite does this, because it's active chlorine, and it will react with the nitrogens. So, in your chlorine generator, you have, well, your TCCA, your hydrochloric acid, aqueous, of course. You get cyanuric acid and three chlorine uh, Cl2 molecules. But you see, the issue with this is that the hydrochloric acid's aqueous. It's in water. And, well, chlorine will react with water to form hypochlorous acid. Hypochlorous acid is a hypochlorite. It will also make chloramines. So this poses an issue where if you're using diluted hydrochloric acid in your chlorine generator, there is a fairly large possibility you're making chloramines in your TCC, in your chlorine generator. And if you get unlucky, it will explode from NCL3. Now this has been demonstrated by a person on um, the Explosion Fire server, which I've been banned from. But um, uh, yeah, he, he posted in people who nearly died. He was using TCCA in a chlorine generator, but he ran out of chlorine, so he was too tired to pound up more TCCA powder, so he put calcium hypochlorite in there. And now, the hypochlorite, yeah, he got NCL3 because the reaction was cold. And you see, I was lucky with what I did, because the sodium hydroxide was very hot, and that prevented any NCL3 buildup. But if you are too unlucky enough to mix sodium hydroxide or any sort of hypochlorite that in cold conditions with your TCCA, you are getting a shrapnel bomb. So yeah, this is an incredibly cursed molecule inherently, and I'll probably dedicate a full video to this because there's a few other things I want to discuss about TCCA that's fairly cursed. I want to go on a little rant here. So... Yeah, usually before doing something like this, which I don't know how to do safely, or do at all, and I literally couldn't find anything online. Yeah, um, I would ask, but you see the issue is, I can't ask anyone anymore, because there is no one I can ask. So you see the issue with that, is that I don't know how to do something which is dangerous, safely. 
And yeah, well, here I just gassed myself. It could have gone even worse. I could have blown off a finger or hand. And that sort of issue I see with punishing people or just like banning people for doing something stupid. Like, if they're showing improvement, at least like give them that, like let them stay around. But, um, yeah. There's a friend I know, I'm not going to say him or his name, because you people are going to all go bother him, but, um, he's an amateur cast holder, he doesn't really do much of it anymore after the incident, but, um, yeah, uh, he wanted to get into pyrotechnics, so he wanted to make, like, um, I'm not going to say what, but, you know, fireworks, the thing that goes in the air and then sparkles, he wanted to make up one of those, and, well, he asked on a different server, not XNF, but a different pyrotechnic server, but he got banned from it from a for asking how to do that. And you see, he didn't want to, like, not do it, because, I mean, it is cool, pyrotechnic is cool, but the only thing stopping me from doing it is because I know I can't do it safely, no matter how much experience or how much I try, I just won't be able to do it safely, but he wanted to do it. So, he found a sketchy website online detailing how to make all sorts of stuff that goes boom, but, um, and it's sort of infamous in the amateur pyro community as being a very unreliable site, but he didn't know that because he was banned. He couldn't ask if this site was reliable. So, he followed it and... Well, in one of the steps where you have to press the mixture, which, by the way, that mixture, I looked at the composition, it inherently is cursed. Yeah, it's chlorate, and yeah, you could probably know already, but uh, it was very cursed. But uh, he, it said to press it, so of course he pressed it, and it went bang, and yeah. So, that's sort of the issue I have with banning people. You're cutting off information from someone, the information that keeps them safe, but I digress, whatever, let's continue on with the video. <laughs> And that's when I realized that something was wrong. There was a weird pool smell. This is not a good sign. I was very stupid by handling this while it was doing that. And then you can see I threw it over there because I actually realized what on earth was happening and what sort of evil mess I was creating. So, yeah, don't mix NaOH with TCCA or any kind of TCCA like stuff, chlorine generator, whatever. It makes chloramine. Do not do this. Use sodium bicarbonate to clean it. It's on our little chloramine friend. Is it still bubbling? I have no clue. Has it become solid? Indeed, it looks so. Should I touch it? Probably not, but it's become a paste. So putting some new fresh TCC in. So we're just gonna start pumping chlorine in. So first we're gonna add some fresh hydrochloric acid to this. And yeah. So if you do this, just like use a large amount of TCC and hydrochloric acid because yeah, the stoichiometry does not work out. So yeah. And by the way, there you used to be a there used to be listings for chlorohydrate on eBay, actually, but I think e eBay nuked them, so, yeah. That's a rip. But yeah, this process, you could... I was saying 26 hours, because that's what the guy in the video used, but in reality, this could be done in 12 hours. Once again, the prep time procedure doesn't really list much, it just says after a short time. What does that mean? But I guess it should be fine to start increasing the temperature, so we're gonna do that cautiously. Literally boiling. 
from the model of HCL going through this thing. At this point, I ran into an interesting issue. This reaction forms HCl gas, which dissolves into sodium hydroxide and acidifies it, which, because it's acidic, not releases the chlorine that it absorbed. So the scrubbing solution actually became a chlorine forming solution. But this was easily solved by more addition of sodium hydroxide. So yeah, look yeah. out for that. Yeah, chlorine. 4 a.m. There's a power outage. I refilled the TCCA. Now we're gonna add some fresh HCl. Okay, so uh, I slept at 5 a.m. and now it's 11.07. So, um, yeah, it's been running a pretty decent time without chlorine, but it should be fine. So, I currently have to try and heat up because I have to do the last phase of the chlorination, which is crank it up to 90 Celsius and just pump chlorine in. And, uh, I have no idea, uh, if the, uh, chloramine beaker survived. Let's go check. It's a solid pellet with a bean in it. Or is that a caterpillar? I don't know. Hmm. I'm gonna have to break that up and just rinse it out later. Oh, and something interesting I noticed was, um, actually, there's a biphase system now in this. If I just turn this on, you can see there's tiny suspension, some tiny droplets suspended in it, and they'll sell out. I have no idea what those are. Maybe chloral, but it should be soluble in ethanol, right? There. So where the hell is it f Oh. Just a bit of lime. That ought to do. Some water. Okay, it's oven boiling. The guy in the video used 87% ethanol, so they got to 90, but this should do. And we're just gonna crank in the chlorine. And <coughs> this trap is working a bit more effectively. Going crazy over there. The chlorine's going crazy. Bubbling's going crazy. I can turn this down a bit. Now we're generating chloral. It's also worth a mention there is a weird sweet smell, which, well, I already mentioned this before, but it's even stronger now, which is probably acetaldehyde or chloral. I don't know what chloral smells like, but it might be chloral. It could also be ethyl chloride, which is also a byproduct of this reaction, so, yeah. You can see it's quickly being absorbed, it's no longer, it doesn't go yellow anymore. So let's just add way more chlorine in. I don't like that smell. That sweet smell, yeah, that's definitely apples, definitely a set out hide. Just crank this in a bit more. Don't let it do that, though. It's not gonna be good. If it does, oh. It's not gonna be good if it does. It no longer has two phases. Very interesting. I think that means we're getting way more chloral now. The whole thing is chlorinating fully. The target goal for this is to pump chlorine until the boiling point reaches 90, eh, 100 Celsius basically. Just around ballpark 98 degrees, which is the boiling point of pure chloral. And obviously ours isn't pure chloral, it's gonna have ethanol mixed in and water and all that stuff, but nah, whatever. And also this is actually looking pretty clean right now. The guy in the video turned into a tar, so we're we're doing something right. I'm just gonna add a bit more. Okay, so I'm currently purging the system of any chlorine using my 
trust the air pump and the thing on top. And it's working. Although I do fear that I might lose some product because the air stream carries it away through the condenser, but that's an issue we'll deal with for safety. I'm gonna rearrange this for simple distillation. Oh yeah, it's working. After a few, like, 5-10 minutes of bubbling, the sulfuric acid no longer has chlorine color to it, so I guess you can recycle your sulfuric this way. Pretty cool. And we are having an oily distillate at eh, 90 celsius or so, so this is most likely chloral, and or an azeotrope of it at least. And um, I originally had a tube going into this water to absorb any HCl, but it sucked back, so I had to quickly pipette the water off before it could form the chloral hydrate. There's probably still some chloral hydrate in there, but we will be drying over sulfuric and distilling it again anyways, so it will be fine. But this really is an oily liquid. So we do in fact have chloral, so that's neat. Um, I'm going to turn the flame down a bit. Wikipedia describes the, the smell of chloride as pungent and irritating, and yes, this is pungent and irritating. It's no longer the green apple smell of acetaldehyde, but a weird sort of fruity smell. It's just ugh. But uh, you can see it's still on nicely. I turn the flame up a bit more. We just dial it back down. The wind keeps knocking the flame around, which is why I don't like doing chemistry, chemistry outside. The flame knock, the wind knocks around flames, and flames are very nice for a lot of stuff. And you can see our distillate is not making it too far in the condenser. Okay, so the temperature is starting to rise a bit. It went to 99 Celsius, so it's gonna. This is probably mostly water now. To that, we'll add our concentrate sulfuric equal volume. Just throw it in a sept funnel, separate it, and then um, distill it again. Now we add in our concentrated sulfuric acid. That should be more than enough. And it's gotten a bit hot. Seems like we don't actually have much chloral. <laughs> well, I'm gonna cap shake and vent it like always. So that goes on top. And let me set up the truck. So I'm just gonna remove that. And I'm gonna try to get it in frame, but I can't guarantee that it will be. That's safe seal. Oh. Seems that was it. Okay, so I set it up for distillation, and well, it's time to distill our final chloral. Turn the heat down a bit. Using my fancy small glassware because, well, you know, small amount of stuff. I don't want to lose it, so yeah. Just turn to a little candle flame. And that should be enough for the distillation. Maybe I'm gonna. Ooh, it's boiling. Moment of truth. Spot on. 104 still. And hydrous chlorine. <laughs> I'll go get the separatory funnel. So let's do this right this time. Spicy. That's it, I'm redoing all of this. Was at Beijing.